Tis the season four, episode 31. Disco delivery. Today for languages, we have three sub only, no dub only, and six hybrid. For this disco day, this will cover the rest of November 2021, December 2021, and January 2022. What about carnival? We have the fronts. We have the spines. We have the other spines. And then we butterfly to the back. A furious fantasia of visionary animation. A collection of art, animation, and robots. For the first time in 4K Ultra HD. So we open it up to see a disc. A robot carnival approaching in Sioux Mass Carnage. And this also has a reversible cover. Very simple. Let's see what the special features are. So we have UHD restoration from the original negatives, both 4 to 3 and 16 to 9 presentations, a new documentary, the memory of Robot Carnival, trailers, and storyboard to screen sequences. This does not have all the other extras that are jam-packed into the original Blu-ray just because of the different specs that you can program from Blu-ray to 4K or UHD, whichever you want to call it. Because of those differences, I would recommend that you keep your Blu-ray copy. If you want an enhanced viewing of Robot Carnival, have this as a supplement to the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray will have more special features. This one you can watch in the greatest definition that you can have at this time. Kodacha on SDBD. So we see the fronts, the spines, the other spine, and the back. Hell hath no fury like a girl with a squeaky mallet. Oh, set this down and open it up to see disc one and disc two. Pop them out to see some deja vu. Little tidbits that I know, for some reason there were some audio licenses from way before when Funimation had this series, so if you watched it sub, you will have some mute moments because they didn't have the audio rights to this person's voice or songs. And hopefully, as these two are in elementary, the second season is when they're in junior high, and we will get the full episodes that for the second season when they release it. Sayuki Reload. I also have a complete collection for the DVD variants. If you see that, like, right up there somewhere. But here is Sayuki Reloaded. This is the, I want to say the second in the series, or at least the TV series, that Genion previously re-released. That Genion previously released. We got the fronts. We got the spines. The other spines. And the back. Set it down and show the jack. We see the disc. Release to frisk. The four guys that we see in blue. whoop de doo so, this being the Uncommon series on DVD, hopefully Disco Tech or someone will announce that they're going to get the other series, Gunlock Reload, since now that's kind of a more uh, difficult one out of the bunch to get right now. Let's bounce away. Ha! Samurai Troopers, or Ronin Warriors, yeah. So we see the fronts. We see the spines. And also, the other spines. Then we butterfly. To the back. The return of a thousand year curse. We set this slip down and practice what we rehearse. So we see disc one, disc two, disc three, disc four, and disc five. Set this one down. And you can see the alternative art, which uh, kind of seems familiar. I, I just don't know where. Also, to note on these discs, if you look close, I'm not sure my film quality will show you, but each of these in the background per disc will emulate each of these emblems that our heroes will hold. I do have the DVDs, but refer to my Saint Seiya Complete Collection video because I show all the DVDs from Bandai Entertainment to Discotex DVDs while giving little insights as to why this was popular over Saint Seiya slash Knights of the Zodiac. Also, to confirm a factoid over a rumor, it was a music license that held this up from being on Blu-ray or on DVD from Discotech, it was the videotape masters taking forever to transfer. So with that, we finally have this series and we can fly off and away. Ursayatsura, only you. We have the fronts. We have the spines. We have the other spines. Then we have the back. Lost 11 years in the making. Not that he remembers. Ho oh, oh, ho, Taru. We see uniform disc, then pop it out to see some uh, deja vu action, if you will. 
So I have seen this movie, not before, but only on Blu-ray. And I liked it in general. I mean, it's your typical Rumiko Takahashi slapstick flavor that she's known for. Lum is in love with the Taru, but a Taru made a promise to this nice lady when she was very young, and once again, a Taru lied. I like this one scene where it mirrors what a Taru and Lum is doing and what the soldiers that protect Lum are doing. You see a Taru trying to escape to go to this new queen while Lum is trying to stop it. However, the soldiers are fighting their best and damnedest to protect Lum and Ataru from her. You see this scene kind of domino and escalate until Ataru, being himself, announces to everyone that he's trying to escape Lum to go to her. I do like the coloration that happened in the movie. Granted, I have not seen the DVD, so I don't know what the prior is. At the beginning, you see the colors go darker and darker because it's getting dark. And everything is vibrant with film grain as well. I had fun watching this, and I hope you can watch it too. This is now movie one and two are finally released from Discotech, and we have a domino effect of announcements of the other movies being released, some with dates, some with not dates. So with that, let's lum away. Project Aco, perfect edition. We have the fronts. We have the spines. We have the other spines. Oh wait. Ooh, look at them. Mm, mm, mm. But wait, they hate each other. That bitch. Then we have the backs. For these three high school students, repelling any alien invasion is just as easy as A B C. Whoop dee dee. Open it up. See the disc. And then the original artwork that they use for the DVD release. This was an amazing watch, again, with the higher quality from the original film reel, the 16 by 9 gives you a much vibrant view of the movie as you would see it normally in theaters, while the 4 by 3 will show you extra stuff that's not supposed to be intended for the viewer to see, such as many complaints of the animation staff. Let's point out all the features. Feature commentaries, trailers, TV spots, music, retrospective, behind the scenes, interviews, galleries, extensive linear notes. And all of those are done amazingly. This is the last thing I watched in 2021, like a lot of people. One of the features that I watched is the music of Project Aco. It was awesome and fun to watch. It made more of what was put into the music production more vivid and personal. Nothing stale, nothing very quote-unquote textbook. It felt like I got to know who these people are, what the personality of these individuals were or is. Like, there's this one girl who wore bowling shoes by accident to the filming of the music video when normally she'd wear yellow Nikes because she forgot them while going bowling the night before. If you get a chance, I'd recommend this version of Project Echo as a purchase. Cutie Honey the Live. We have the fronts, the spines, the other spines, and the back. Honey's here in the flesh. Whoopesh. We open it up to see Cutie Honey and uh, her. Yes, her. We remove the disc to see... And now there is a third girl in Cutie Honey that I do not know. I need to watch this. I haven't seen it yet. So this is the 2007 live-action TV series of Cutie Honey. Not to be confused with the live-action movie that was released a little bit prior in the U.S. with those awesome lunchboxes. So with that, let's Cutie Honey just show me. Girly Air Force. We have the fronts. We have the spines. We have the other spines. And the back. It's not science fiction, it's what we do every day. Set it down and open it up. See one disc of a magma jet flying at you. With a picture of a magma jet flying at you. I've seen the first episode a long, long time ago. Well, not too long, like 2018 ago. If I recall, you have the girls who infuse their spirits in the planes as the ace pilots fly the planes to shoot down the people. I could be dead wrong, but what little I saw, um, uh, oh hell, I'll watch this again. And we're off. <laughs> the Witches of the Orient. 
This is a Japanese slash French documentary of the 1960 Olympics that Japan won with volleyball and the team. This heavily influenced Attacker U, which had a French release. And what's unique about this documentary is there's not really a narrated plot. In this case, it just lets the film reels roll. We get to understand the personalities of each of the players. And it's set to some pretty neat music video segues. So with that, we have the front. Spike to the spine. Roll to the back. And open the attack. So, this was a well worth watch. There is a small segment that has a bit of gray on the screen that's not intentional, but if you're curious about Attacker U, see a group of textile workers become Tokyo's top volleyball player. History or anime, this sort of segues you to really wish that Attacker U was released over here. And with that, we're out. Speed Racer chapter books, we have the first volume. We have the second volume. We have the third volume. We have the fourth volume. We have the fifth volume. We have the sixth volume. And these are the spines to stay aligned and we show the back. We got Pops. We got Rex Racer or Racer X. We got Mom. We got Trixie. We got Spritel. And we have Sparky. No Chim Chim though. If you recall, one of the anime bargain hunts, I got this one for a pretty sweet deal. To my knowledge, I got all the volumes of this chapter book series. From New Year's Glee to All the Sea, I give you A, B, C, D to see the video at B. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment below, watch my playlists, share with your friends, follow my social medias, ring that bell, and I'll have more to come later. Thank you for watching.